Hi everybody and welcome to this video on blood spatter analysis as part of the forensic psychology topic in Year 11 Psychology. So let's get started. So blood spatter analysis can be extremely useful not only for scientists and law enforcement analysing the crime scene but for criminal psychologists to determine the motive, the weapon used and help them build the criminal profile. I've actually explained the criminal profile in a previous video the blood spatter pattern on a crime scene or at a crime scene can be extremely helpful in determining, again, the weapon that was used, whether it was uh, low, medium or high velocity, what type of blood spatter it is, whether it is transfer or another one. And obviously it can help to determine or reveal the type of crime that was committed, whether it was a, um, a murder in cold blood or whether it was a crime of passion. And it can also aid with looking at if a particular crime scene was staged or um, if it was an intruder that was not known to the victim and so on. So the blood spatter can really reveal quite a bit in terms of the crime scene and the crime being committed, often unfortunately murder. So blood spatter can range from a few drops to large pools. Regardless, the pattern is left by blood traveling into space and coming into contact with another surface. That's what spatter is defined as. So the average adult has approximately 10 pints of blood, which equates to four to five liters approximately. So let's go through now the types of blood spatter. So there's three main types, each with their own examples and variants, depending of course on the case. So we have passive spatter, transfer spatter and projected spatter. So passive spatter, the first one, is when drops of blood or uh, blood flows and or pools of blood uh, are resulting from gravity and gravity alone. So it's gravity that's causing the blood to drop or the blood to flow or pool in the same spot. So the surface of the blood falls onto, or the surface of the blood of what it falls onto is due to gravity, all right? So for example, as we can see here in the picture, blood drops falling onto a smooth surface such as glass will cause smooth edges as we can see here, whereas rough uneven surfaces will cause spiny edges to form as we can see here. So this is smooth surface uh, that the blood is dropping onto such as glass, whereas this would be characteristic of a rougher surface such as wood. That can actually be very, very helpful to investigators in terms of how long the person has been bleeding for in that one spot and whether they were actually collapsed or died at that particular spot as well. All right, so some more passive spatter examples. There's also satellite spatter, when smaller droplets of blood bounce out to the sides of a larger central pool when they hit. So satellite spatter is also very, very common when there is blood in blood, so where blood drips repeatedly into an existing pool, as we can see here. So this, this is what we consider satellite spatter, so we can see the main droplet, but then little uh, smaller droplets around the main circle. Okay, so that's the satellite happening there. So smaller droplets of blood bounce out from the sides. And blood into blood, as we can see here, is when, um, again, as I've said before, where blood drips repeatedly into an existing pool. So it's uh, dripping into the same spot. All right, so it creates a pool um, after an extended period of time. Okay, some more passive spatter examples, all right? So a saturation or pooling pattern indicates the victim has been bleeding for an extended period of time with no movement. Because passive spatter is caused by gravity, it means that the person has not been moving for an extended period of time and it's causing the blood to pool in that one spot, bleeding from a particular wound. This is very typical to see on things like mattresses, beds and floors. It's very common to see that. Um, because typically that's where, unfortunately, a lot of crimes and murders are committed. Okay, now we have the second type, which is transfer spatter. So this occurs when an object that has wet blood on it comes into contact with another object. So there's lots of different examples of transfer spatter. It's one of the most common types that is seen at a crime scene. So common examples like I've got here include a shoe, um, a hair uh, print, a hand print, a weapon print or clothing transfers. Again, this is very useful in determining the victims and the offenders movements at a crime scene. So if there was a hand swipe or a hair swipe or a shoe print, it can indicate the direction that either the victim was going or the direction that the criminal was going. 
Okay, some more examples of transfer spatter. So a swipe, like I said before, refers to blood that gets smeared as you move a bloody source across an unsoiled source. So this causes feathering, typically in the direction of the movement. All right, this is very typical with hands, hair, and fabric. So as we can see here, we've got uh, two different swipe pictures here. So we've got the shoe, a shoe swipe transfer and a hand swipe transfer that indicates the direction again of the victim or the criminal. A wipe pattern, by contrast, is when you drag an object through an existing blood stain, removing sections of the blood. This is typical when offenders rub a cloth through blood stains to con try and conceal their crimes. So this here is a wipe transfer to try and wipe away the blood that was pre-existing. Then we have the third type, which is projected spatter. So this occurs when a force is applied to the source of the blood. So in other words, the blood is projected either with, with, with different velocities, so low, medium or high. So it's important to look at the velocity of the projected stain. So it is categorized into low, medium and high. So let's have a look at low uh, velocity projected spatter. So this occurs when a minimal amount of force is used to spatter blood or when gravity alone causes blood to drip. So passive stains can be, in some instances, an example of low velocity blood spatter. So it's characterized by large drops, much bigger and chunkier than medium or high velocity spatter. So examples of inflection include a punch or a fist or a small stab wound. Now knife or sharp wounds in a particular area can, oh sorry, knives and sharp wounds in particular, sorry, can also cause what we call arterial blood spatter in which a spurt of blood is released when a major, a major artery is severed. So pictured here is an arterial blood spatter where the blood actually squirts out because it needed to be projected from the major artery. That's very common. Then we have medium velocity projected spatter. So this occurs when there is a moderate amount of force being applied. This is quite common. This is more so um, one of the more common types of blood spatter where there is a weapon involved. So the force applied to the blood source, usually the body, means that the blood travels faster and produces smaller airborne droplets than it would in a low velocity pattern. So this is common in a very violent uh, crime scene with a blunt weapon, such as a baseball bat or a piece of wood or a crowbar. It's often very typical to see medium velocity projected spatter. Now with um, medium velocity projected spatter, there's also very common blood spatter type called cast off. So this is blood that flies off the, an object while it's in motion. So the blood is cast off a particular weapon usually. So there's several ways this could occur, such as someone with blood soaked sleeves swinging their arms as they run, but it is again more common, or more commonly the blood gets inadvertently flung off a weapon being used to make multiple blows. So the more cast off that's present, the more blows that the victim unfortunately um, received. Then we have high velocity uh, projected spatter. So this occurs when something hits the blood or the body with tremendous force and atomizes it into a fine mist or airborne particles as pictured here. So it's frequently accompanied by saturation or pooling, but high velocity mist leaves the droplets so tiny that sometimes they are often um, indistinguished by it to the naked eye. It's very, very difficult to see the high velocity projected spatter with the naked eye. It takes technology and different chemicals to actually view them properly. So what we see here is very common with things such as gunshots, car accidents, or explosions where there is a tremendous force that is applied. Okay guys, so that is the revision video for the different types of blood spatter. So if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, happy revising.